suspicion. And we engage with the Sudanese leadership just to ring the alarm bell, the importance of, you know, can you keep the, the first? Uh, to ring the alarm bell to, uh, to, can you keep the first slide, please? Yeah. Uh, to, to ring the alarm bell about the importance and the centrality of, of security transformation. And uh, in fact, what led to the outbreak of crisis in Sudan, they agreed on all aspects. They just differ on how the security sector reform and, uh, and, uh, and direction. And I think this is just underscored the importance of, uh, of, of national security strategy. In fact, we shared with the leadership of Sudan before that, you need to have a vision, you need to have a very clear direction. And, and that direction is so necessary. It's just only to tell to all the participants the centrality of security. A security that is guided by a policy is very critical for the stability and the issues of governance in the country. Please don't take it lightly. Uh, if the security sector is not managed properly, it's becoming a source of insecurity. And Sudan is a, a, a clear case for that. Let me talk, let me look at this toolkit, and I think you all uh, provided a very good context, so I need not talk a lot about it. But I'm going to talk more about this toolkit uh, first, but before that, when there are a few concepts that I would really like to, to share with you, and it is something we observe myself in me, fairly a group of us being assisting uh, our, our, the countries intending to develop their national security. One thing is about the security itself. It's the term that is very important for a nation to have a common understanding what do you mean by security. Given the fact that security is being misunderstood or actually the perception of citizens when they talk about security is just like a taboo, it's something so bad. In Sudan, when we're talking about the civil society, about security, is something they don't want to hear. It is associated with bad abuses. And, and it's a big thing, especially among the citizens, especially if the state is using its institutions, especially the security apparatus, to separate the people, then the concept of security becoming really difficult for people to embrace it as, as, as a concept that is so relevant to them. Security is just like health, it's just like education. And the way it is delivered, planned, managed, it must be with the people. And I think that's a very important. You may need to look into this security, I believe you might have talked about. This idea of human security, freedom from fear, freedom from want, these are very fundamental aspects of the way we would like to understand the security. And the citizen to understand this security is indeed one of very fundamental services. Sometimes on the continent, security is mixed up with defense. In some countries, they see that as if defense is the security. When you talk about defense, that is, you're talking about security of the country. It's a national security. Defense is about defending your country, uh, territorial integrity. Security is bigger than defense. And I think it is very important, and I know sometimes there is this idea of, of uh, making a distinction between defense and security. And that's why you'll see on the continent sometimes a defense strategy is being seen as if it is a national security strategy. The second one is the issue of intelligence and security. You know, on the continent, there's a lot of mixture. When you talk about national security or security, it is perceived as if it's for the intelligence. Intelligence is about gathering the information, analyzing the information, and use those information for the executive to act on it. You may need also this concept of what is the security sector. And African Union actually provided a good definition for this. What is security sector? And I think it's very important to refer to that uh, definition of, of security sector. Maybe just briefly, what do we mean by national security policy and national security strategy? I think you all talk about it. Uh, national security policy is the vision. 
is the vision, the way you want to deliver to secure the country. And the national security strategy is a plan of action of how you want to implement such a vision, such a, a policy. I think it is very important for you to know sometimes are used in such a way if a national security strategy or a policy is including the national security strategy, how you would like to implement, then it is called national security strategy. And it is composing of both the vision as well as implementation of how to implement. So I think these are some of the few things that I want to, 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 to highlight. But I will really go deep into how can you, like what you all said, our journey was so long. Hello? Our journey was so long in a sense that we started in 2017 with all the case studies and we discovered there are no tools on the continent to help the applicant to develop national security strategy. In fact, there's that lack of it. I hope national security strategy is about public policy design. And in fact, I, I hope among you here, some people from Zambia, one of the good experience I saw on the continent is Zambian experience. They have provided a guidance of how you can develop a national a, a public policy. And that guidance is so powerful in terms of the consultation. You cannot pass any policy in Zambia without subjecting it to the consultation. So national security strategy is about public policy design and implementation. Please make sure use the experience of Zambia. It's one of the experiences that I... So it is within that domain of how you develop public policy in a country. And, and this toolkit is actually informed by that, that context of the year. Public. And it's a very developed policy. And that, this toolkit is helping you to go to the process. Again, this toolkit is not a panacea to get you a solution to your problem. It is only a menu. And you, in the menu, you can pick what you see. Context is very important. You tailor it to the context. And you will see during my, my presentation later on, different countries, uh, uh, they adopt different ways of developing their national security strategy. Maybe next slide. Now, based on the case studies as mentioned by, by Joel, we have identified uh, five phases. I hope, I believe some of you might have attended some of our engagement. These phases are very important, but these phases are not linear. They are they are interconnected in one way or another. The first phase is planning and initiation. This is a very important uh, um, phase. Who to initiate the development of national security strategy. Our experience on the continent is that the head of state usually initiates such a process. And, and it is very important because you have to have a buying in of the leadership. And having the head of state, having it is very important. Sometimes some countries, they have a legal requirement. It is, could be in a law or in a legislation or an act requiring the executive to, to develop national security strategy or policy. And I think it differs from one country to, to another. I think Joel mentioned something very important, but who to take the lead? In most cases, is a big challenge because in most of the African countries, the ministries of defense, they tend to be very well organized, they know the issues of security, and they tend to be the one taking the lead. But sometimes that could be becoming even challenging because you will continue to take security in the context of military centric. It is advisable sometimes not to move away from one, one ministry. In some other countries, there is what is called National Security Council to be the one taking the lead. And uh, this National Security Council is consisting with different factors. But the most important thing is that always each country has its own unique uh, situation. But then you come to the drafting team. The drafting team is extremely, extremely very important. 
in most cases, the drafting team should be should reflect the diversity of a country, and it should not be dominated by 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 especially the military or those in uniform. Especially the issues of youth and the women, very important for them to be represented in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, in this, in this, in this, in this adopting team. Uh, this is phase one. Phase two, I know my time will be a bit of a challenge, is the, the, um, the pre-drafting. What should you do before drafting? We have seen some countries, they, you have to start with what you have. And this is what is called the, uh, the security sector audit. Make audit of what is available. Don't start from nowhere. You have so much you can learn from. You may have your sectorial policies. There could be a vision. That could be, please use them and see what are the gaps. What are the institutional security sector? Uh, so see those gaps because national security strategy will be able to help to fill the gaps in terms of the policies gaps or in terms of the legislation or even in terms of the procedure in decision making or the or the or the architecture of the security. Make a clear audit assessment. And the, the, the most important one of the things we always say is that the World Bank they have what is called public expenditure review audit, especially for the uh, for the security sector. It's a tool that you can be able to use to know what is the status of the year. Uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the security of the policies in your country, and 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 um, the second phase, I mean phase three, is the drafting itself. The experience on the continent is that usually you form a very small group from a, the, the different line ministries, people with expertise, and they will be able to make based on the existing secondary data they will be able to develop what we call the zero draft. And that zero draft is very important, which is usually in the capital. And then you come to the year. Uh, and that zero draft becoming a basis that you will use in order for the consultation with the citizen. Then phase four is consultation and review. And this is really the most difficult part. Uh, you may need, this is where you may need to take the zero draft, some aspect of zero draft, to be the basis to consult the citizen. Many countries did a good job in terms of taking it to the local level of the uh, of the structure of the of the government, and with the communities at that level, using different ways of how you can be able to to consult the people. Consultation doesn't mean that you have to agree on anything, but you have to have a consensus. So when you finish with the consultation, you bring it back again and to see how to handle the divergent views of the uh, of the document. Uh, in fact, for consultation, I want to give you an example, and I hope among you here there is somebody from Botswana. Uh, Botswana is one of a very a very a country that has a culture of consulting people. They develop the vision. And the vision was really subject to this, uh, consultation with the citizen. And in fact, they are using that, that experience now of the way to develop their vision to be the basis upon which they want to develop their national security strategy. Adoption, that is phase five, and approval. This is sometimes, it is very important who to approve and how to adopt it. Uh, sometimes it is, it don't make a policy or the strategy to be like an act of, of the parliament. It is good you have it as to be passed by the executive, but you need to bring it to take it to the uh, to the parliament for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the recognition because the parliament is very important for the issue of legitimacy. And then you come to the issue of dissemination and communication as phase six. And then the last phase, phase seven, I will talk more about it, about the implementation. This is the heart. It has been observed all over. Uh, most of the public policies are hardly implemented. Less than 24% are implemented. All, all of them. But I will talk to, about this issue of implementation and then the monitoring and, and review. Uh, next slide. Then the question now, what are the elements of the, what should be in the national security uh, strategy? 
Some of them, it is what I think you all mentioned it, the definition of security is extremely important. We have a national definition of security. And I think he gave you some of the examples. A statement of a guiding values for national security, uh, national security strategy. Because the issue of values is very important. We have observed on the continent that sometimes some of these values are in the constitution, but they don't get into the national values, the values that are the country is so proud of. And we put certain of these values, like Ubuntu, some other you see in the toolkit, look to those values that, that measure your unity, your stability. And uh, it is not like just yes, these, these are very global values that coming like, yes, we put them there. So national security should be a way of recognizing these African traditional values to guide you. National security is about how you can share your values. And it's very important to, to reflect those values. They are in the constitution. Sometimes you may need even to dig more on that. The other one is the national interest and national security interest. And this should be guided by your values. Each country has its own unique situation. It is those, those national security interests that will be able to shape the way you want to. And then the most important thing is the national vision for security. Two things are here. We have a national vision. But here you want to have a national security vision. How do you want to see uh, the security being provided to the city? And then the, the other component is your threat assessment or opportunities. This is, this is the heart of the issues. And I think I hope your colleagues from Zambia would be a very, a very important. How can you identify the security risks facing your country? How can you... And in fact, Zambia has a very good framework that they develop in order to, to prioritize this. You may have many of them. Should you look into issues of the, the, probability, the probability of occurrence of a risk and its impact as a way? So there are different mechanisms for you really to, 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 to assess the, uh, the threat. And, the, and the, 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 the last one is how you can now prioritize and set your objectives. And the last one is the division of labor. How can you assign roles and responsibility and a mechanism for oversight, civilian oversight? Maybe these are some of the components you will get them in the in the in the year. Next, um, I'm almost there, <laughs> Catherine. I'm coming to the issue of implementation. I think national security is nothing if it is not implemented. What we have seen many many, many public policies documents are shell. And, and in most cases, national security for the implementation, you have to have an institution that should oversee its implementation. In some countries, it is the National Security Council, which is actually tasked with that one. The other one, that is the national security strategy, it should provide guidance for the sectorial policies and, and strategies, how they should be developed and how they should be implemented. Sometimes you may have sectoral policies there, like the defense policy, but after having the national security strategy, it should be the basis upon which you review these sectorial policies. But importantly also, the national security is a way of how to provide guidance of how resources to be allocated to the security sector and how they should be managed. I know uh, Dr. Johnson will be talking about it. And then we, you want to have national security document as a living document. It must be it must be subjected for learning and learning from it and adapting it. Usually in Africa Center we are so fond of uh, uh, PDIA, um, problem driven iterative adaptation as a mechanism for which you can be able to make a document a living document. Um, next the last little I really recommend you why, why do public policy fail. It's a very good work done by, by uh, somebody from uh, Harvard Kennedy School. And it's really it's about, about how, why the public policies implementation they fail. And this is, and in fact, the main idea, they call it the uh, futility trap. Because if, uh, if what is happening is that if a public policy is designed in such a way it's not in consultation with the citizen, 
is bound to fail. And for you to change this utility trap is really to go to the process, like what you all say, the process is very important. Sometimes a process that is actually subjected to the citizen consultation tend to even stand a better chance. In fact, to, you know, Johnson will talk later on about contestability. For you to be to contest with other sector, as a future sector, you have to be sure that you have the blessing of a citizen. And that by itself will help you as a tool of advocacy for you to not only for your citizen, but indeed for the uh, for your neighboring countries because um, public, I mean, national security strategy is a communication tool.